Hi, I'm Corey Ann Haydu. I'm the author of the Hand Me Down Magic series, and I'm going to read the first two chapters of book one of the series, which is called Stoop Sale Treasures. Hi, and I'm Luisa Uribe. I'm the illustrator for the series, and I will be drawing while Corey reads. Chapter one. 86 and a half, 23rd Avenue. The Curious Cousin's second-hand shop was located in a brick building with a purple door and flower boxes full of purple pansies at 86 and a half, 23rd Avenue. It was Alma's favorite building on the street, but competition was tough. She also loved the bakery that always smelled of cinnamon. She loved the building next door with its stained glass windows and the one next to that with an enormous flower wreath on its door and a baby-sized gnome perched on its stoop. Alma had been missing 23rd Avenue. She had been dreaming about being right here with her best friend in the world, her cousin Del. Del's real name was Delphina, but she said that never felt right to her. Del was always the name that fit her best. You're here, you're here, you're here, Del cried the second Alma stepped out of her parents' old-fashioned green car. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, Alma shouted back, and in no time at all, the girls were hugging and screeching and talking so fast that no one else could possibly catch a word of it. You two might as well have your own secret language, Alma's mother said with a laugh. The rest of us don't have a chance of keeping up. We should totally invent a secret language, Del said, missing the point or learn how to communicate without words, Alma said. She stared down her cousin. She raised her eyebrows. She stared even harder. Del stared back and Alma was sure they were talking through their brains. Del must have thought so too, because she exclaimed, you want a tour of the shop. I heard you, you said you'd been waiting all day to see it. Alma still had her polka dotted suitcase next to her on the sidewalk. She had actually been thinking that she'd like to go up to her new apartment and take a deep breath. She and her parents had driven six hours from their old home on the lake to their new home in the city. Along the way, they had stopped for grilled cheese sandwiches and at a gift shop to buy a frame for the picture Alma had taken of the lake. She wanted to hang it above her bed at her new home in her new bedroom above the curious cousin's secondhand shop. But more than that, she wanted to have a best friend cousin and an awesome first day and a secret, no words language with Del. Okay, Alma said, maybe for a minute. Every summer, Del spent a month at the lake with Alma and Alma's parents. And every Christmas, Alma spent a few nights with Del and Alma's father's side of the family. There were dozens of cousins and titis and tios, so many that Alma always lost track when she was trying to count them up. This would be the first time Alma lived near her whole family. She loved visiting for Christmas and she loved when Del visited her for the summer. She was pretty sure she would love living here too, but she would miss the icy blue lake and her big bedroom that looked out at the dock. She loved drawing and it was especially fun to draw the lake as she looked at it from her window. She would miss the fireplace in the living room and how quiet it got at night. It was very rarely quiet at 86 and a half, 23rd Avenue. The first floor was the Curious Cousin's secondhand shop, an abuelita's garden out back with its huge four person hammock and herb garden. The second floor was abuelita's home. Del lived on the third floor with her family. Their cousin Evie and her family lived on the fourth floor with Titi Rosa. Alma and her parents would be moving into the apartment on the fifth floor. She would have to get used to the long walk up the four flights of stairs. She would also have to get used to the hustle and bustle of the city, her nosy little cousin Evie, and enormous family dinners at Abuelita's. It was a lot to get used to, but Alma was ready. She was almost sure. Chapter two, fitting in, Dell. Del was sure that Alma would like the old rocking horse best of all. It was made of worn velvet and squeaked, squeaked when it rocked. They found it all the way back in the back of the store. I think the horse is magical, Del said. I'm pretty sure. Can you feel the magic? I think it belonged to a princess maybe. Sometimes I think it's trying to talk to me. I bet someday it will ride away, right, right out of the shop, right out of the whole neighborhood, don't you think? Del was sure her cousin would agree with her. That's what cousins were for, after all. Well, it's pretty, 
Alma said, but she didn't say much else. Del would just have to try harder. Del showed Alma the basket of scarves and the one dozen jewelry boxes. She showed her where they stirred furniture and shoes and coffee mugs. Alma found the display of tiny spoons from faraway countries and cities all over the world. Del had been collecting them for years. Abuelita promised that they would go to every spoon city someday. Look, it's Paris, Del told Alma. Alma's eyes shone finally. Is there one for Puerto Rico, she asked. I've always wanted to go. Of course there is, Del said. We found it when we visited last year. Maybe you'll come with us this year. Del was getting more excited by the minute. There was so much to show Alma. This is the accordion. I hope we never sell it, Del said, pointing out more of her very favorite objects. She grabbed a bejeweled blue tutu. This costume was maybe worn by a famous ballerina. It probably was. What do you think? Are these real jewels? Maybe, Alma said. They're really sparkly. Can we try it on and pretend to be famous ballerinas? Maybe later, Del said. But first, I have to show you the rest of the neighborhood. Well, but I've seen the neighborhood, Alma said. You live here now. It's totally different. Del held Alma's hand tightly. Oh, okay, Alma said. She sounded unsure. Del would have to think of even more exciting stuff to show her cousin. She pulled her onto the street. Cora and Javi were right outside the door, hanging up posters of Oscar. Oh, Del said, ready to show Alma more things she needed to know about the neighborhood. This is Oscar. He's very important. He's the best dog on the street. He likes bacon and balls and squirrels. He only barks when he wants to play and when he sees a squirrel. Alma lit up. Del remembered that Alma loved dogs. Where is he? Alma asked his owners. Can we play with him? He's actually gone missing, Cora said. He's been gone for two days. Del gasped. Oscar couldn't be missing. He was such a good dog. Will you look out for him, Javi asked. Del nodded very, very hard. We'll find him, she said, and she really meant it. Well, I'm good at finding things, Alma said. And Del remembered the time Alma found her missing stuffed rabbit, Tammy. She could find anything. Alma had moved to 23rd Avenue at the perfect time. They said goodbye to Cora and Javi and walked all the way up the four flights of stairs to the fifth floor apartment. Del had decorated it just for Alma with orange flowers since orange was Alma's favorite color and drawings of Alma's old home and a photograph of the whole family together last Christmas. Your new home, Del said. I can't believe I live here now, Alma said. She was smiling and frowning at the same time. Del didn't know that was possible. Don't worry, Del said. I'll help you fit in. I don't fit in, Alma asked. She looked worried, but Del knew there was nothing to worry about. 86 and a half 23rd Avenue was the most wonderful place to live. It was festive and fun and filled with family all the time. She'd get Alma excited about all of it. You will, Del said. And that's it for now. Thank you so much for reading it with me and have a great time. Bye. Bye.